first of all, thank you guys for all the subscribers. It's incredible how many has happened in the last 24 hours. This just blows me away. I've got over 100 now, and to me, 100 people, if you put 100 people in an auditorium to come and see what I do, that'd be a big, huge room full of people. That's a lot of people. Thank you so much for that. I just wanted to let you know, guys know that it means a lot to me that, that you actually are interested enough in what I'm doing to actually subscribe, and I just wanted to let that be known. Now let's see what we're going to do today. Primary kind of point of this video is, is to see how quickly I can go through this review and keep it moving without dragging it out. Let's get started. Browning Target 620 is a box camera from the late 40s, early 50s. I don't know exact date of manufacture, they didn't serialize them, but the, this one was made from 46 to 52. It's got a single lens in there, a little lens in the middle of it. It has a single shutter speed of about 1 30th of a second. It also has a second mode called bulb mode. You know, you pull out this little tab right here and then you can throw the shutter and it'll just stay open as long as you hold it open. So if you have it like sitting on a table or something where it's nice and stable, if you was willing to stand there a long time, you could do really long exposures, but you know, you could get cars moving by and get some, you know, some nice light trails and things, but you need a nice stable surface. You can set it on the sidewalk seriously and hold it down where it wouldn't move while you fire it things like that that's that's some of the things we figured out with it and then you have two shutter speeds or two apertures excuse me you have two apertures you have f11 with this pushed down and f16 with it pulled all the way out it's got two viewfinders one for portrait mode this this lens looks down through this lens and then this lens looks down through this for landscape it's meant to be held at waist level and sided down through the lens and out it's got a film winder. That's what this lever does. And that's it. It's that simple. To put, to put film in it, you'll spin this and pull it out. It'll move out a little over an eighth of an inch. Pull it up on this front pin that holds the little handle strap on it, and the whole camera comes apart. All right. You set this down out of the way, and you have a empty spool at the top, and an opening at the bottom is the way it should come out of your camera. You take the empty spool out, take your new roll of 620 film, 120 spools won't fit in this camera. You can shove them in there, but then it's going to cause trouble when you put it in the case. You're going to have problems. Always rewind it on the 620 spools. You just do that in a dark bag or in your dark room. Take your empty spool, start your film, put it down here in your take-up reel location, drop your fresh roll in, it comes across. Once you get your spool in, I'm going to put this in back where it should be so that when I do load it, with, with film, it'll be in the right spot. You literally just drop it back in the case and that pin will drop back in and lock the camera in the case. Re-engage this and then on the back has a little bit of red window. You'll start turning this, get in some good light so you can see through it good. And you'll see some dots go by usually and then you'll see an S for the start of the film because the film is taped to paper and the paper is what's going by the window. All right, and then the number one will come up once you see that you're on your first frame and when you fire it you just turn this dial until the number two shows up in this window and you're on frame two and it's that simple and it takes a two and a half by four and a three quarter negative it's a huge negative it's medium format what i do is i take my negatives and i develop them because i'm shooting black and white i develop them right here and then i take the develop negatives and cut them into strips of three frames per strip and then I put them on a flatbed scanner and scan them at 600 dots per inch resolution into the computer and then I take them into Lightroom and turn them into black and white images you have to do a few things we'll go over that in the video but that's all there is to it it's a lot of fun kids love it so if you want to get a, some kind of a simple activity that's kind of techy a little bit so that it satisfies you and something that's got some neat factor because it's old but it still works to intrigue the kid these are pretty cool and they're dirt cheap the film is almost as expensive as the camera was um, I buy my film from Fomapan out of the Czech Republic and buy it off eBay they sell it direct on eBay and they ship it and it takes it it takes a few weeks to get it you know I was kind of wanting to play with it sooner so I spent 
extra and got a roll of film that was in the US already. If you have any questions about it, put them in the comments. Um, if you like my little short that I've done here, give me a thumbs up. If you don't, give me a thumbs down. You know, I mean, people, not everybody's into film. But it's a neat little, it's a neat little camera. So if you get an opportunity, get one of them, play with it. You'll love it. We'll talk to you soon. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content like this, then hit subscribe. Especially if you like the kind of reviews I do, which is basically, you know, I'm going to use the equipment and I'm not going to worry so much about a spec sheet or a, or a scientific analysis on a test chart. I'm going to shoot pictures with it and I'm going to see how they look. You know, so if you enjoyed that, like I said, hit subscribe and you'll get more of it. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down. You know, let me know in the comments what you did and didn't like. We'll go from there. Thank you very much. We'll see y'all soon.